Hello and welcome to section five on the part on motivation. So I will now talk briefly about the workflow of ASP and to this end I will more or less instantiate the problem solving diagram at the very from the very beginning of the lecture. So it's all about solving problems. So we have a problem, we want to get a solution. So in ASP and as in declarative problem solving, what we do is we model the problem and provide a formal representation. This representation has the form of a logic programming, of a, log of a logic program. It's a set of rules. And although we haven't seen that, this logic program usually has variables, which can be instantiated by terms which represent objects, right? And so then the actual solving part in ASP is composed of two steps. The first step is called grounding. There all variables are replaced systematically by all possible um, terms or object constants. And then at that point in the middle of it, we get a so-called propositional logic program that is a logic program without any uh, variables. And then the solver takes this propositional program and computes the stable models. Well, these stable models are, well, again, assignments of true and false to, to propositions, to atoms. And they have then to be interpreted by, I don't know, another piece of software or a human being to read off the solution. Now, before actually closing this very short section on the workflow, let's actually see where the different mothers of ASP come in. So, first of all, the modeling language borrows a lot of intuitions from knowledge representation. That's after all what we want to do. We want to represent knowledge. Then the actual format of the logic programs goes back to logic programming. It's very close to prolog programs, but has also many other constructs like, even though we haven't talked about integrity constraints, cardinality constraints, etc., etc. Okay, then the grounding techniques uh, actually use deductive database techniques. So actually what we will see later on is that a single rule can be seen as a SQL or SQL query, which materializes a table. So, and well, everything that happens in the grounder really goes back to basic algorithms from database technology. Then the solver, as mentioned, borrows a lot of the technology from satisfiability testing. But here one should be careful because satisfiability testing is a very narrow uh, task, while ASP solving is much broader. Actually, talking to the developer of CLASP, our solver, Benjamin Kaufman, uh, he always said that if you look at the code of CLASP, the solver used in Klingo, 10% of it would amount to a SAT solver. The rest is really ASP. Since I already mentioned somehow CLASP, the solver, I should also mention Gringo, the grounder, which is our grounder. And together, Gringo and CLASP form the ASP system Klingo, which is the grounder, the solver, and uh, well, a rather rich API to, to control the whole thing and to interact with software environments. Okay, then we get the stable models and Again, stable models, as I try to say in my lengthy speed in the last section, uh, have this notion of closed world or the closed world assumption built in. And this is also present in databases, in knowledge representation and reason, non monotonic reasoning and logic programming. And then, as usual, with all things that happen on a computer, an output is produced and this has to be interpreted. OK, so that's it for this very short section. Next, we look at the, at the engine of CLASP. Stay tuned. Bye.